Hey everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a very exciting update video for Prehistoric Kingdom. So Prehistoric Kingdom has come out with their February devlog there. And uh, in it, we have the new announcement date for the Alpha. So those of you that were the uh, the pre-backers and all that kind of fun stuff uh, and, and, uh, are going to get access to the Alpha, you have access to it on March 19th. So yeah, that is very, very exciting news. And uh, yeah, really can't wait to sink our teeth into some prehistoric kingdom action there. We've been waiting uh, quite a, lo a long time there. And yeah, it's finally here on March 19th for the alpha version there. So um, yeah, just some basic um, information was kind of given for the uh, for the release there today. And yeah, that's what's in the devlog that we're gonna go through. So uh, yeah, let's kind of see what's uh, going on there. So for the animals, we're gonna have six different animals uh, coming in with this. We have the uh, Tyrannosaurus, the Edmontosaurus. Oh, if I butcher these and I'm going to butcher names, um, Dino Nerds, you're going to have to help me out. Um, <laughs> the Lambiosaurus, the Styrosaurus, Nasu to Ceratops, mm -hmm. and Microraptor, including alternate skins and species, uh, multi level pathfinding. Use the modular system to re uh, create corridors, platforms, and ramps for your animals to navigate around. That's pretty neat. Uh, various behaviors. Ani uh, animals can engage in a variety of basic behaviors like eating, drinking, grazing, resting, socializing, and broadcasting, like on the radio. Uh, some animals will be updated to include absent behavior shortly after Alpha's release. Very cool. So yeah, there's kind of the base um, information for the animals that will be coming into this uh, Alpha there. So um, then we move on to the creative side. Terraforming Suites. Carve the terrain with six distinct tools. Raise, lower, smooth, flatten, roughen, and erosion. Okay, so um, all the ones before erosion are pretty... Um, I know that a lot, but the erosion, that sounds interesting. Maybe that's like the roughen tool in Planet Zoo. Uh, get your feet wet with up to three paintable water materials in varying depth. Oh, cool. So maybe like a clear, uh, a rough... Then what would the third one be? Hmm, I can't really think of it. Maybe like just like a dirty or something like that. Um, let's see. Four paintable biomes. Tropical, temperate, scrubland, and wetland are available to paint terrain and forests with. Use the brush intensity to create subtle and stylish gradients between textures to add some more realism to the park. Uh, 13 structures. Bring your prehistoric kingdom to life with a selection of buildings from the animal care, infrastructure, guest facilities, and enclosure categories. Very nice. Uh, 250 modular items. Aha, here's what we like. Um, get custom with over 250 modular items, pieces, and plants to um, build designs of your own um, specificity, and use the modern styling to pick from seven wall textures or four roof designs. Okay, so it sounds like we're getting a modern set to kind of start off with and uh, we've been seeing teasers of that and uh, you know different pictures and videos and stuff like that so that's the kind of the theme that they've been working with for a little bit so um, cool we're gonna be able to work with yeah again over 250 modular items for this modern wall set there uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, in the future what kind of different um, themes and uh, sets we get um, to go along with the modern set there. So uh, up next we have paths and fences. Choose from 12 fences and 7 path materials using an intuitive spline based uh, construction system. Enable terraced fence placement to create a uniquely staggered look. Oh interesting, cool. And spline based. Oh, that's That sounds fun. Um, saving and loading. Save your park and build it up over time. As with nature of alpha, save games will likely break up at, uh, entering beta and early well yeah sure sure so they're basically saying um any parks that you build in alpha probably aren't going to transfer over to beta and then like the final game and stuff but that's like most alphas are kind of like that um so uh due to more extensive development being required some previously planned features like object slash wall recoloring and undo redo will be unavailable until beta or early access launch Ooh, no undo redo for the alpha that's a bummer but again it's an alpha so it's you know alpha's gonna alpha right where if you're expecting a full game release you know, again, no, this is just the alpha of it. So <laughs> we have alpha, beta, and then full release to go through. But dang, no undo redo. That is going to take a hot second to get used to uh, until that gets in game there. But no worries. Um, eventually, we will get that there. And and the um, the object wall recoloring too. That's good. So all the all the parks for the alpha will kind of have that kind of samey kind of look as far as the aesthetic goes um, to them. But you know, in the future, we'll be able to recolor things and all that fun stuff there. It sounds like so. Um, yeah, there you go. So in the management section. Let's see, we have the basic economy. Provide for supply and demand with guest facilities and attractions. Um, offset the costs of construction, animal production, and building upkeep by turning a profit. Uh, basic power management. Connect and power your park with basic power management. Failure and reboot mechanics have been disabled for the alpha. 
and basic visitors. Uh, what's parked without guests to wander the paths? Additional animations, AI, enhanced model variation, and guest-related gameplay will be arriving in beta and early access launch there. It's cool. So yeah, you'll just pay, you'll have people, it sounds like there'll be people walking around and they'll do basic like, here is money, I have it, giving you money, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, as far as like enhanced model variations and guest-related gameplay, um, that's gonna be coming on later on there. So Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see, important and additional information. In terms of what you expect for support during alpha, we're only looking to tackle stability issues and bug fixes. We'll be making note of player feedback and talking with communi the community the entire time, but any new or upcoming content we show in devlogs won't be available until beta or early access. And that's in bold, they want you to know that. So yeah, new um, upcoming content we show in devlogs won't be available until beta or early access unless explicitly stated. So they're, they're let us know like what's coming uh, otherwise uh, don't expect it if it's just kind of randomly showing off in uh, like teaser uh, videos and stuff uh, we're treating alpha and beta as distinct milestones so that we're not simultaneously implementing features and shipping them to a live branch without extensive and internal uh, testing or supporting content by staggering additions between the two milestones we're able to focus on feedback that's specific specific to what we currently offer rather than diluting the results okay so interesting there you go so they're gonna be definitely taking on a lot of community feedback during the alpha and beta um, time there so yeah if you want to get your feedback heard be sure to you know um, yeah let the uh, let them know what you want to know or what you want uh, done to the game and everything so uh, for alpha backers who went through Kickstarter we're currently trying to establish a reliable and automated distribution method to ensure contributors receive their key and other rewards in the future um, we will have specifics available prior to alpha's release via news update there you go so there you go alpha backers you'll get some info um, soon on how you're gonna get your key Let's see, regarding general availability, we will eventually be removing the alpha tier over on the Cretivo store. An announcement will be made to spec uh, specify when exactly that'll happen. Uh, once purchased, there is no end, quote unquote, to alpha playtime. It's always accessible and will upgrade uh, to the beta. Alpha isn't the early access launch. That is later in 2021. Yes, alpha and early access, different things there. So uh, screenshots, streams, and videos from alpha can be shared. Show us what you're making. We'd love to see it. Oh, I definitely will. Don't you worry there. <laughs> so uh, cool. Here we go with the um, next section here is the development report. Uh, it's almost time to release Alpha, and we couldn't be more excited. Our VIPs, ha our VIPs have had access for a bit over a month now, leaving us with a lot of great feedback and creations to admire. Uh, on the dev side of things, each part of the team has been creating, iterating, and implementing a bunch of things so that they're ready in time. Uh, both um, planner reflections and water shading continue to improve, and a whole bunch of audio has been implemented too, including an overhauled set of UI sounds. Ah, very nice. Very, very nice there. Here's a, uh, there's the photo there of the improved water rendering and reflections. That looks really, really good uh, with the reflection in there. That's, that's dang near uh, lifelike there. <laughs> uh, the visuals of our power management are, stating, are starting to come together as well. A changing in color grading and some temporary but effective highlights for the power radius helps to show the range of generators to the player. These will get extra visual polish in the future, um, though they are more than workable for now. Uh, for our feathery friend, the Microraptor, receiving new wing textures in an Wait, an Alula, a bird's thumb. Oh, interesting. To improve its fidelity and correct an anatom uh, anatomical issue there. There you go. Very, very nice. All right, then here is a quick look over the uh, development report there. So there you go. Let's see, down here we have um, development highlights, animal implementation, uh, modular pathfinding. Yeah, I was interested in this. This sounds interesting there. Um, with much excitement, we're pleased to say that the animals are now able to navigate modular buildings. This is a huge deal for us, as we weren't sure if it would be something we'd be able to do. Uh, thanks to one of our programmers, Matt, uh, creatures can successfully walk around walls and utilize both ramps and platforms if the space is big enough. Oh my god, yeah, there's going to be some of you out there who are going to make ridiculous things, right? You're going to make... Um, uh, like a giant tower. I expect to see like a skyscraper where dinosaurs can just like um, scale the skyscraper kind of thing. Uh, we really wanted a level of interaction between modular pieces and our creatures. So to finally see it come to fruition through pathfinding is simply fantastic. And yeah, it does look absolutely g uh, great. A lot of uh, a lot of possibilities with that. As a result, there are so many opportunities for creative builds. It can't be understated how much of a game changer this is for the team, literally. Uh, and we cannot wait to see how players implement this functionality into their um, habitats there. Very nice. Yeah, that's, a, that's really cool. Um, audio. 
Sound found its way to our vocalization behaviors early in February, adding audio to the social call slash response, SAD and broadcast calls. Uh, we created a short showcase video de um, demonstrating the new animations and sounds for our Edmonton Saurus. Take a look. Oh yeah, let's take a look here. We've also been working on our distance model to help ground the distant sounds of broadcasts within the park and deliver important information like an animal in distress. Okay, interesting. Uh, next up, foliage showcase. Ah, we we'll love a good bit of tree. <laughs> the field elm, oak, and sable palmetto uh, were added to the temperate and scrubland biomes to introduce more um, verticality. Uh, we're especially fond of the new palmetto. It's great for honing in on that prehistoric look. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. It, it never fails whenever you see the um, new foliage and everything, or just uh, foliage screenshots uh, from prehistoric. It's, it's always a bit of like, that's a game. Yes, that is a game. Because uh, yeah, this is this is dang near uh, lifelike, especially the skybox in the background. If you take a look at the clouds and everything in the back, um, I think that really sells it, is that the skybox looks really, really realistic there. Uh, three size variants of the Sable Palmetto. Yeah, and those uh, different screenshots there. Very nice. Including all variants, this brings our number of foliage assets available in Alpha up to 70. Ah, nice. Uh, building Showcase. <clears throat> Throughout February, we began implementing high quality custom wall and roof materials to replace our previous uh, modern texture set. Moving to a more advanced workflow, uh, both implementation and asset creation, this has allowed us to bring out a greater level of detail with a minimal performance trade-off. Ah, nice. Uh, increasing texture resolution by over two times, two times the texture, and we're not losing that much uh, performance. There you go. Nice. Oh yeah, it looks really, really good. See here that we have some modern roofs as well. Some of the wall and roof materials will become recolorable at a later date. Ah, yes, absolutely necessary, right? Uh, we're aiming to transfer all of our existing buildings over to this new technique by Alpha's release so that modern textures are one-to-one um, one one across the game. Uh, hay beds. All animals need a place to sleep, and there's no comfier spot than a hay bed. These items um, are used to define custom resting spots with a habitat or modular build. There you go. Very. Um, so those of you that are, have played Planet Zoo, that's going to be very familiar, right? There you go. Fences. Uh, through, though the weakest of the bunch, glass fences are a stylish way to increase the habitat visibility. They come in one, two and a half, and four meter heights, making them ideal window to another world. Concrete fences are strong, providing a thick slab of stone and internal steel to hold more aggressive animals. These come in one, two and a half, and four meter variants. Bringing the total up to 12 types, that's all the modern fences for now. There are a few uh, wall variants and new materials that we'd like to add down the line, but for the time being, we're quite content with the core lineup. Yeah, they look really, really good too with the combination of the glass and concrete and all the foliage and stuff. Uh, yeah, they look really, really nice there. So <clears throat> there you go. So, and then, um, yeah, the rest of it is just a bit of the news roundup that is on their uh, Twitter and everything and Discord as well off showing uh, some of the community spotlights here, some of the things that the people have been building over the past month and uh, the pictures they've been taking. And holy cow, I think you can agree, they just look really, really good there. So, uh, but yeah, there you go. That is the February uh, roundup there for Prehistoric Kingdom, the February devlog. And there is just so, so much to uh, be excited for. You know, first and foremost, the March 19th um, release date for the Alpha. So yeah, do you have access to the Alpha? Are you excited to play it there? And uh, yeah, what is your most, um, what are you most excited to jump into um, for Prehistoric Kingdom? Uh, myself, I, I can't even, I don't even know right now. I, I think I gotta do a Tyrannosaurus Rex 
uh, habitat right off the gate and uh, maybe play with some of those platforms and uh, just, I don't know there's just so much there's so much but yeah um, come March 19th here on this channel we'll be definitely covering um, a lot of prehistoric kingdom there a bunch of habitats a bunch of zoos or well, no do we call it a zoo or is it a park right because it was Jurassic Park so it, it wasn't Jurassic Zoo it'd be Jurassic like park so yeah we're gonna be doing have a bunch of different parks and stuff like that and uh, yeah we'll be covering uh, prehistoric kingdom from alpha beta early access up to full release and everything like that so it's gonna be a ton a ton of fun uh, covering prehistoric kingdom and all of the fun updates uh, that it's going to have there so yeah there you go definitely comment down below let me know what are you most excited for with prehistoric kingdom are you looking forward to the dinosaurs uh, the 250 plus modular build items in there um, yeah all that fun so oh you know speaking of that uh, before we sign off I forgot speaking of Twitter and all that um, over on their Twitter <clears throat> Uh, Simply Savannah, she shared her uh, build or her devlog video where she kind of discussed things and she was asking a few good questions in there and Prehistoric Kingdom actually replied back when it came to some of the building questions uh, that she had there and uh, one of them was to answer your question about rotating textures, yes, every piece can be rotated or stretched using the advanced editing tools, even items that use the grid by default. You can choose to enable or disable the building grid at any time while editing a modular group. And that is awesome. You hear like myself, so Simply Savannah, Esti, you know, a whole bunch of people is always kind of complaining like, oh, the grid, I wish we could just do yada yada. Well, now you can, like in this game, you can there. Um, and then they also, you know, you can, yeah, stretch um, items and uh, spin them around, all that kind of fun stuff there. So, um, and then uh, Nicholas Lion Rider actually um, replied back to Prehistoric Kingdom asking a question. Uh, he said, uh, I know this is a kind of super specific nerdy game dev question stuff, um, but does this mean it basically real time UV modification? Like we could basically in real time change how the UVs are projected on the meshes and Prehistoric Kingdom replied we don't do anything like that at the moment, though it could be a neat um, avenue to explore in the future. Um, items like mulch use uh, world space materials to alleviate stretching, but we do have limits on all pieces to control the potential min-max scaling. In general, we're okay with most pieces having their textures stretched by the scale tool, as it's a player-driven choice. What looks good or acceptable is ultimately down to the user, how much they do um, how much they do it in, con in the context of their build. And that is just like music to my ears how, how often have we said in like um different planet games or you know not even that just other build games in general where it's like uh let me you know do this because i want to i don't care if it you know affects performance or affects how it's gonna look it's like i accept that right and uh basically pre prehistoric kingdom is like yeah you know what sure you can stretch that and mold it and do kind of whatever you want to it and if it starts to um you know uh, stretch too much or bleed through or whatever you know if you're okay with that you're okay with that sure why not so uh yeah that is great news and i love that kind of um mentality and uh, i guess attitude or just thinking um with the dev crew there just kind of like you know we're big boys and girls who bought the game and it's okay if you know you can let us make decisions on our own and not hold our hand through the whole thing kind of uh kind of thing so uh but yeah no overall i'm extremely excited for um prehistoric kingdom to uh, come out into alpha there on march 19th and just overall excited to see what the future holds uh for this game there it seems like like the future could definitely be bright. So, hey, thanks so much, everyone, for uh, joining us for this uh, look at the Prehistoric Kingdom devlog. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button there, stay up to date with all the fun prehistoric news and builds and stuff coming up in the future. And also hit the like button, it does help out the video, helps out the channel as always. So, hey, thanks so much, everyone, and until the next one, we'll see you next time. Thanks.